Welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum, and we'd like to invite you today and to have you invite your friends. Okay, Rich, we're going to kind of leave that part off and start over again. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum. I'm a board-certified internist and medical director of the Practitioners Alliance Network. I've been researching effective treatment for pain, fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, and fibromyalgia for over 35 years now. And we're happy as part of this lecture series to talk about how to optimize energy for anybody who wants to feel great, including those with CFS and fibromyalgia. We're going to talk today about how to get a great night's sleep. This is such a common problem for people. And we have over 70 million Americans now who have disordered sleeping. They have trouble getting enough sleep, falling asleep, staying asleep, sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome. It's really a problem for people. And it's critical, if you want to feel great, for people to get their eight to nine hours of sleep a night. Now, let's start with why eight to nine hours? Where does that number come from? Well, if you go back 130 years ago, uh, to when light bulbs were developed, people were getting an average of nine hours sleep a night. That was the average. As many people got 10 as got eight. And in fact, anthropologists tell us that going back over 5,000 years, the average night sleep was closer to 11 hours a night. The sun went down, people went to sleep. It came up, they woke up. We're now down to six and three quarter hour a night. That is a 30% pay cut that the average person has in their sleep over the last 130 years. And those with CFS and fibromyalgia get much less than that. So what is it that's resulting in this poor sleep? Well, the number one thing is people are not taking the time for sleep. We are so busy with life and we have radio, TV, computers, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, emails, all these other things, and people are finding that they're just not making the time. And when that happens, if you don't have enough sleep, um, you're going to have fatigue. People are going to have pain. There's an average six and a half pound weight gain that occurs in people who get inadequate sleep with a 30% increased risk of obesity, premature aging, immune suppression, and depression are all common problems caused by inadequate sleep. So why are people not sleeping? As you mentioned, even though last on the list here, the most important is that they're not making time for sleep. But there are other major causes that cause insomnia even when people make the time. A very severe cause of poor sleep, for example, would be chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, where people actually have suppression of the control center for sleep called the hypothalamus. That's the hallmark of CFS and fibro. And that hypothalamic center controls sleep, hormones, temperature regulation, and autonomic function, which is basically a blood pressure, pulse, or sweating, and gut function. So the sleep center is not working in that disease. And in severe stress, we can even start to see the hypothalamic function start to kind of flicker before that circuit goes offline. Other people find that they're peeing all night. Um, others will find they have day-night cycle switched. And this is also very common for people, uh, and in CFS and fibromyalgia, especially common. Normally, our adrenal glands make a lot of cortisol in the morning and make very little at night so we can sleep. So there's this day-night clock for adrenal function. But many people find that they're exhausted all day, and then at bedtime, their mind is wide awake and racing. So that's when that day-night cycle gets switched. We're going to talk about how to take care of that later on in the talk. Um, restless leg syndrome is very common. We'll see a third of people, CFS and fibromyalgia, have it. Where your legs are kind of jumpy all night, and that disturbs your sleep and the sleep of those around you. Uh, sleep apnea as well, where people snore and stop breathing. Having young children that wake you up, uh, a spouse that snores, poor sleep hygiene. And as we started with, again, making time for sleep is so important. Now, to make time for sleep, 
I recommend that you cut out those things that you don't enjoy. Some people say, oh my God, I've got to cut out this thing that I love. And I say, no, make a list of the things you don't enjoy. For example, how many of you watch the evening news networks? Most of that stuff is a fiction that's geared to scare you to death so you keep watching. Seriously, if you watch the two different net, main networks in the U.S., you'll think for many things, especially watch the political reporting, you'll think you're on three different planets. So at least two of them is making, are making up a good bit of it. And it's a secret. They're all pretty much fictions meant to keep you watching by dramatizing things. So as long as you enjoy watching them, watch it. But as soon as you find you're grinding your teeth and getting irritated, which I find takes me about 20 seconds into it, turn it off. So... Make time for sleep by getting rid of things that you don't enjoy. Now, some people will recommend sleep testing, and we do sleep testing in a fair number of people. Uh, the study is pretty expensive, it's about $1,500, and insurance companies like to make people's lives miserable trying to get them to cover the test. Um, so what I recommend instead for most of my folks is that they simply videotape themselves. And now with iPhones and Androids and such that have a, a video camera on them, it's very easy. You just set it near the foot of the bed on something and hit record when you go to bed. Just go to sleep with a, a sheet in the beginning. Uh, so you can see your feet, see your head, and you can tell if your legs are kind of jumpy and restless, um, and you can see if you snore and stop breathing. And if so, you want to look at the restless leg syndrome and sleep apnea. Uh, that's a good screening test. I don't, if the restless leg syndrome looks present, I just treat it. Uh, sleep apnea, I'll do a sleep study to confirm and uh, go into more treatment options in that way. Um, so simply videotaping yourself, in my humble opinion, is the way that I recommend for most people to begin with. So getting a good night's sleep, let's start with the basics, which would be good sleep hygiene. Now, for most Americans, that's the main issue is the sleep hygiene. But for people with CFS and fibromyalgia, other autoimmune diseases, um, it's the sleep center is often not working. So we're going to start the sleep hygiene anyway, because when you're not able to sleep, the sleep hygiene tends to go out the window and that aggravates problems. So let's get back to a couple basics. Number one. No caffeine after 4 p.m. if you have trouble sleeping. Number two, get in the habit of not using the bed for anything besides sleep and sex, unless you're maybe watching TV in bed as a prelude to going to sleep. You want to train your mind that, just like when you do, when you teach children certain routines for sleeping, here's your favorite bedtime movies, bedtime story, that you get them into a routine that triggers their mind to say, okay, sleep is coming and off they go. Adults are really no different. If you're used to problem solving and paying bills and everything in bed, you're going to be in that state of mind when you climb into bed. Do those kind of things elsewhere. A very nice evening ritual for adults is to take a hot bath. And especially if you have pain, go ahead and take one or two cups of Epsom salts. Those are magnesium salts. You can get, I think, nine or 12 pound bags at Costco for very cheap. Uh, Walmart has them safe, very easy to find. Um, and put one or two cups in the tub. Uh, if you want to, you can even add some lavender oil, which helps sleep. And then um, I would light some candles, put on some pleasing music that's kind of soft and relaxing. Get a glass of red wine. Uh, maybe get a square of your best tasting uh, chocolate you can find. You know, more is not butter, but and just make this this evening ritual time for you, where you get to savor, relax. The magnesium and heat will relax your muscles. Don't go straight to bed after do it an hour before, because uh, you'll sweat if you go straight to bed. Wrap in a nice robe when you're done. Maybe rinse off in warm water. For those with CFS and fibromyalgia, when you get out of the tub. Do so carefully because the warmth and the magnesium will drop your blood pressure a bit. So get up carefully, make sure you're not lightheaded um, before you get up and go. And then read a comic book, watch some TV, this kind of uh, enjoyable but boring color, <laughs> at least low key anyway. And then off to sleep. You'll find it helps the pain, helps sleep. But then keep the room cool. If you frequently wake up to urinate during the night, uh, Avoid drinking a lot of fluids at bedtime if this is a problem for you. Um, in addition, you want to teach your bladder. Your bladder is like a baby. And what happens is that your 
if say, if those of you with CFS and fibro, they're going to be awake because of the fibro. And anybody's bladder is full during the night, and then you figure, well, I'm awake because I had a pee. No, you're awake because of the fibro. Um, if you shake your hubby next to you and you say, honey, you got a pee, I'm going to go, and roll over and go right back to sleep. So first call, when you wake up and you notice your bladder is full, just in your mind, tell it, just like you're telling baby, go back to sleep. We'll pee in the morning. Uh, now, five minutes later, if you still got to go, go. But you'll find most of the time you'll roll over go back to sleep. And just like a baby, your bladder will stop waking you up to play. And it will sleep through the night. Put the alarm clock out of arm's reach and where you can't see it, basically facing away from you. And very, very, very important for those of you who wake up two to four-ish in the morning, have a one-ounce protein Notice protein is enlarged. If you have a carbohydrate snack, it'll wake you up. A protein snack, like a hard-boiled egg, some uh, turkey or cheese or uh, fish, uh, anything that's high in protein before bedtime. Because often, especially in CFS and fibro, it's a drop in blood sugar that wakes people up wide awake. And um, the protein snack will help maintain blood sugar during sleep. Now, if your sleep is disrupted by young children or a bud partner who's snoring, say sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome, again, get some wax earplugs, uh, get some white noise makers, say have a Delta Wave sleep CD on Amazon, which is good. Uh, consider tucking your honey in and then going to sleep in a separate bedroom. Um, if the other person has the sleep apnea and snoring, uh, we're going to talk about treating sleep apnea below um, and treating the snoring. So apply that those to your hubby. Now, a major cause of snoring and a major cause of non-restorative sleep is not breathing through your nose at night. If your nose is blocked up, most people will not wake up refreshed. So how do you handle the nasal congestion? And when you're lying in bed, if you do wake in the middle of the night, pinch one nostril at a time and see if you can breathe through the other and then do the other side, just so you can see whether you do have nasal congestion or not. If you find that, you mouth, that you're not able to breathe through your nose, um, this may be a major cause of the sleep disruption. Couple simple things to begin with. Uh, most grocery stores, drug stores will have what are called breathe right nose strips. These are like spring-loaded Band-Aids that go over the bridge of your nose and they pull the nostrils apart. Uh, on Amazon, you can find something called a nose vent, which is like two little springs that go inside the nose and push the nostrils apart. You can use the two of these together. Um, most importantly, you want to treat the underlying candida. And we're going to have an upcoming uh, webinar on that in this webinar series. Um, the main cause of nasal congestion in this country, especially if it's year-round, um, would be fungal overgrowth and an immune reaction to the fungal overgrowth in the nose. This was shown in several studies at Mayo Clinic. And what we find is that using special sinusitis nose sprays that are made by compounding pharmacies and six weeks of Diflucan, 200 milligrams a day, uh, that combination, you need both together, will often make the chronic nasal congestion and sinusitis go away. If it persists, a sleep study where they specifically check for upper airway resistance syndrome, or UARS, can be very helpful. Again, most sleep studies will not look for UARS unless the doctor specifically requires and requests that they do so. You have to be very, very clear with that and ask that they're checking for that or they won't. So let's take a look at good quality sleep. Because I'm going to tell you, I've treated thousands of people with insomnia because I treat CFS and fibromyalgia, and you know, many of you know that that's horrible insomnia. And I can count on my fingers how many we've not been able to get good, solid sleep for. So some of you right now are saying, there's no way I can get eight hours sleep a night. And I'm going to say, yes, you can. And we're going to show you how. So number one. I like to start with natural sleep aids. They tend to be safer in the long term and also tend to be less expensive often. The, uh, for most people with day-to-day -day insomnia, these natural sleep aids will be all that they're going to need. For people with CFS and fibromyalgia uh, or chronic severe pain causing the insomnia, they're going to find that you need to add uh, some medications 
to the natural sleep options to really get the solid sleep that you need. So I want to talk about six uh, herbal sleep aids, and all of these can be found in combination in this product called the Revitalizing Sleep Formula. It has the valerian, passion flower, lemon balm, hops, theanine, and wild lettuce. So let's take a look. Uh, the wild lettuce uh, has been a wonderful herb for anxiety and, and insomnia. It does have uh, stimulating properties for the endorphin receptors, making it very good. And it's very good for headaches, muscle pain, joint pain. It's also very calming and helps reduce anxiety. Um, it's hard to overdose on. Uh, the only overdose reports for people who thought that it was basically lettuce and they ate it in a salad and they slept for 36 hours and woke up incredibly refreshed. So it's a very, very safe herb. Um, lemon balm, also known as Melissa, uh, has been shown in a study combined with valerian to be quite effective for sleep. Um, in fact, as effective as medications. Uh, it also has a nice side benefit of suppressing viral infections. But what you're going to see is that many treatments, um, most medications have side effects, but you'll find for many of the herbals, they have side benefits. It's a really good thing. Now, hops. Most of you are familiar with hops because it's the main component of beer. Uh, it's actually a member of the hemp family. It's a cousin, and the female flowers are used in beer making. The hops help stimulate some hormonal activity, uh, may help suppress cancers a bit in test tube studies. So maybe one of the reasons why people who drink beer live longer. Um, it, uh, hops also has antibiotic and antifungal activities. It has a long history of being used for anxiety and also insomnia. And uh, one study looking at a combination of hops and valerian uh, showed that it was effective uh, to the same degree as Valium medications for insomnia. It is very, very safe. So looking at all this, you can understand why Benjamin Franklin said, beer is God's way of saying that he loves us. <laughs> I agree. So I think the hops can be excellent and sometimes can be done even as a little bit of beer before bedtime. Now, if you drink too much alcohol before bedtime, it disrupts sleep. I'm of the opinion and centuries of experience as well that a small amount of alcohol before bedtime can help sleep. See how it works for you. Valerian is one of the most commonly used herbs. Uh, there are a number of many, many studies looking at it, uh, finding that it helps people sleep without hangover and unless you go at very high doses. Um, the benefits increased over time. The longer you used it, the more effective it was. Uh, again, in a head-on study against another Valium family medication, it was of equal effect. And the Valerian, I find, works best in combination with the other herbs. and uh, it's in combination with the five herbs in this product. The passion flower or passiflora uh, is an excellent herb used throughout South America as a calming agent. Uh, when people are nervous in South America, they are anxious, their friends often say, oh, go get a passion flower drink. Uh, it's very, very helpful. Uh, also helps anxiety, menstrual pain, and has a host of other benefits and may even help increase men's libido. Uh, theanine comes from green tea and is very calming, helps put people in kind of a meditative state of mind. The problem is if you drink enough green tea, even if you get the caffeine free, to get the benefits for sleep, you're going to be up all night peeing. So it's best taken in an herbal form. The only form to be used is the sun theanine, uh, which is uh, the L-theanine. The other ones, which are, they're like a mix of left and right handed scissors, so they just don't work. You have to have the right form. Um, so, again, all of these six can be found in a product called the Revitalizing Sleep Formula. For anybody with insomnia, I recommend this is a place to begin. Anybody who wants even a deeper, more refreshing night's sleep, they just want to optimize and improve their sleep experience, the Revitalizing Sleep Formula is the way to go. I will note that about 5 to 10 percent of people will get energized from valerian. They get actually more wide awake. And if that happens, uh, and it's not any more common in fibro than it is in the general population, fortunately, um, fibro people tend to react more to stuff, but not to this in terms of it being a problem. Um, 
then you use the other components if you can't use the valerian. But it's much easier for those who can, just to take one to four capsules at nighttime. I usually start with two for most people. Um, and it can also be used during the day. You know, it's going to be very hard to overdose on it. So the revitalizing sleep formula is a really good place to begin for getting a good solid night's sleep. It can be taken with any other herbs and also can be taken with any sleep medications. Let's go through some other sleep aids that can be very helpful as well. 5-HTP uh, or 5-hydroxytryptophan is basically an amino acid. Uh, think of it as a protein. And if you take 200 to 400 milligrams at night, it has been shown to be very helpful for improving sleep, helping lose weight, and also improves mood. So it's a very, very helpful kind of thing, but it can take a while to work. Uh, you want to give it six weeks to see the full effect, although some people will see it within days. The main downside of 5-HTP is that it, because it does raise serotonin, just like many medications do, if you're taking a lot of other medications that raise serotonin, which people with fibro often are, you can see the serotonin go too high either with or without the 5-HTP. The way that you tell to consider whether you have too high serotonin is if you have anxiety, racing heart, and you know, feel too hyper. Um, by the time it gets to fever, that's very dangerous. Um, what I would note though is one out of eight people with fibromyalgia have anxiety and hyperness because of other metabolic changes. But it's worth checking with your doctor to see if you don't want to stop the medications, but by cutting the serotonin raising medications in half, such as trazodone, any of the antidepressants, or most of them anyway, uh, Ultram, uh, for two, three days, that will usually get the serotonin to come down. If the anxiety goes away, you have your answer. And if not, then it's usually not going to be that. Um, but again, for most people, even on the medications, they can take 200 milligrams of serotonin. But uh, the 300 to 400 dose I would do only under a doctor's supervision uh, or another health practitioner, um, or if you're not taking serotonin raising meds. Uh, another wonderful natural sleep aid would be lavender. Lavender, the smell of lavender helps sleep. If you put some lavender flowers, even dried flowers, by your bedside, um, each evening I take a drop of lavender oil, put a on my upper lip under my nose, nice and got a mustache, it helps keep it in place there. Um, it has been shown to help sleep. You can take lavender oil by mouth, and studies have shown it to be very helpful for both sleep and calming. So you take one at bedtime, or you can take one twice a day to help calm you down. I recommend one called Calm Aid. That one's made by Nature's Way. Uh, also a very good product uh, that can be combined with the others to help you sleep. So for most people with day-to-day -day insomnia, just to revitalize and sleep formula is going to be enough, or maybe taking uh, the Calmade, uh, something like that. But again, for those with severe uh, problems with sleep, and especially those with CFS and fibromyalgia, where they really need strong sleep support, you want to add one treatment to the next until you get your eight hours a night. Melatonin, very helpful, one half to one milligram is all that most people need. And virtually all the effect is seen in the first half milligram. This is looked at in the studies. So I usually use the lower dose unless uh, there are two, a few exceptions. One, if you find a higher dose works better, use it. Uh, two, for those with nighttime acid reflux or delayed, delayed sleep phase where so they have trouble falling asleep until very late at night, the higher five milligram dose may work better. But for most people, the one half milligram is fine. Now, magnesium, also very helpful at the time for sleep. Uh, for those of you who get the runs from the magnesium, uh, but know they really need the magnesium because it helps energy, it helps muscles relax, it helps calming, it helps all kinds of things. Magnesium is critical because the average diet loses half magnesium in food processing. Most people are deficient. Um, and a CFS and fibro is especially critical. But a lot of people, if they have gut problems, they can't tolerate the magnesium because of the runs. Um, here's what you do. There's a sustained release magnesium made by Jigsaw Health. Uh, it is, people love it because they can take the two tablets a day or two twice a day, build their magnesium stores back up. It also has malic acid and some other good nutrients in it. No diarrhea. 
In fact, it's a smaller company, and their advertising budget in the beginning was simply that they made a bunch of rolls of toilet paper that said magnesium without the runs, no S bleep bleep T, exclamation mark. And they'd send out those rolls of toilet paper, and that was their advertising. <laughs> it's actually, they're right. There's it just, uh, does not cause diarrhea. It is awesome for people. So for those who get the runs from, from magnesium but need it, the Jigsaw Magnesium is available on our website at endfatigue.com. Now, um, we talked about people uh, will often have their mind, you know, they're tired all day, they're exhausted, and then finally it's bedtime and their mind is racing. In fact, their best time of day, the only time of day they can have energy and mental clarity to get work done seems at 10, to 2, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So those uh, folks have reverse day-night cycles, and it tends to be a problem with adrenal uh, hormone cycling, the loss of what's called uh, proper circadian or day-night rhythm. So the cortisol levels are too low during the day and too high at night. So what do you do with that? There's a nice mix uh, of ashwagandha and phosphatidylserine, and um, you can find that in a product called Sleep Tonight. It also contains magnolia bark, which helps sleep. So this combination is excellent for those of you whose minds are racing at bedtime. Or you can just try it for a couple nights and see if it works. It works very well with the revitalizing sleep formula. The uh, there's another product, which is an over-the-counter antihistamine. Uh, there's three of them in the family, doxylamine, benadryl, and dramamine. Uh, that's my order of preference for trying them. They're all kind of cousins. Uh, the doxylamine can be found as Unisom for sleep. Uh, Costco sells the doxylamine in the sleep section. Um, and there's a bunch of Unisoms, but the uh, one of them has a doxylamine in it. So that's one that I find works the best for people. It uh, can also help nerve pain. The main side effects would be sedation, dry mouth, and increased dementia risk in those over 60, because we find that in those over 60 who are taking a lot of medications that block the neurotransmitter involved in memory called acetylcholine, uh, the risk of dementia uh, goes up and we take them off those medications. But I think it's a very safe one overall, it's just like Benadryl, um, and very worth trying along with the other treatments you're doing. If the dry mouth is an issue, uh, there is a omega-7 called Hydra-7. Uh, it takes about two, three months, but it really helps dry mouth, dry mouth and dry eyes a lot. So for those who do a dry mouth, dry eyes issue, uh, get the Hydra 7, take two twice a day for two, three months, and then you can drop the dose slower to maybe one or two a day. So we've talked about the natural sleep aids, and let's talk about the medications. Um, because again, for those with CFS and fibro, they will need to add the medications. And these can be combined with all of the natural products we talked about. They all play well together. Everything we talked about today pretty much can be used in combination as needed to get the seven to nine hours of solid sleep without waking your hangover. What you'll find is that mixing a low dose of several treatments is more likely to help you sleep without side effects or hangover than a high dose of one treatment because each of these treatments is cleared out of the body on their own timetable. So if you take a low dose, it'll get a certain level in the middle of the night and be out of your body by morning. But if you go ahead, uh, and then if you take five of them together, the, height, the effect in the middle of the night is additive, but they're still out of the body by morning, so you're not hungover, and you don't get the side effects. So combining a low dose of several things, I find works much better than a high dose of one. Also remember to optimize hormones. Uh, for example, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, if these are low, it will disrupt sleep. Uh, progesterone is especially important for sleep in women. It's like our body's natural value. Uh, and optimizing that using only, only, only bioidentical hormones can be very helpful. So um, those of you uh, who find that to get, if you're getting enough of the sleep aids uh, to help you sleep but you're hungover the next day, except for the Ambien, Lunesta, or Sonata, uh, all the other medications can be taken an hour or even two hours before bedtime. Just don't drive after you take them because they, they take a while to kick in and then they'll wear off earlier the next day. Those medications help you stay asleep, so it's okay to take them a little bit earlier where the Ambien helps you 
fall asleep and you want to take it right away at bedtime. Um, antidepressants can often help sleep after six weeks use as well. The best options that I find, um, for those who have trouble falling asleep, the Ambien I find to be the best option, Zolpidem, uh, Stilnacht, uh, it has many, many names around the world, but it's Zolpidem. Um, and one half to one tablet at that time. I recommend people just crush it between their, get the generic, crush it between your front teeth, stick it under your tongue. And that way it goes into the bloodstream very quickly instead of having to take a half hour to go through your stomach and travel around that way. So um, for that one, crush under your front teeth, uh, between your teeth, under your tongue. Um, what most people find best is to use a 10 milligram tablet uh, or even a five milligram for many people and leave one third of the tablet at bedside. Um, and then if you wake up in the middle of the night, you can stick the, you can just reach over and take that third, crush it between your front teeth, stick it under your tongue, and it'll then get into your bloodstream very quickly. And usually within a minute or two, you'll be back asleep. And you know the difference when you wake up and you, and you can roll over and go back to sleep versus when you wake up and you're wide awake. Uh, just be cautious not to take it uh, less than two hours or so before waking uh, and that the dose is not high enough to impair driving if you're going to be driving in the morning. So check with your doctor about proper dosing. Um, but all it takes for men is about two and a half milligrams and for women and one and a quarter milligrams to really put you back to sleep and put under your tongue. So you take this a little bit. Desiril is another excellent medication. Uh, you don't need the 300 to 450 milligram doses used for depression. Uh, it's Even though it's marketed as an antidepressant, I don't use it that way. I use it for anxiety for folks and for sleep. 50 milligrams, small dose. Uh, take one half to one tablet at bedtime is all you'll need. Flexural or cyclobenzaprin, that's another one where more is not better. Five milligram tablets and just half a tablet. Studies show that 2.8 milligrams is the optimal dose in fibromyalgia, folks. Um, so just go ahead and break the tablet, the five milligram tablet in half, and uh, and take it before bedtime. And it's very, very helpful at helping sleep. At that low dose, the side effects get very low. Uh, Neurontin, another excellent medication for sleep. Uh, Start with 100 milligram capsules because some people find that the 300s may be too sedating, others not at all. Um, and then work your way up. Uh, you can take as much as 1200 milligrams at that time, but usually one to six at that time. Once you find a dose that works best for you, uh, they have single tablets of 300 and 400 milligrams. Uh, Doxepin, Elevil, uh, other medications and tricyclics at very, very low dose can be helpful. Xanaflex. Uh, very good for pain as well as for sleep. Four milligrams, uh, one half to two tablets at bedtime. And if it causes nightmares, you want to stop it. That's the main side effect in a small, small percent of people. Um, so if you go ahead and mix these treatments, mix and match them, try one at a time, you'll know the first night what most of them are going to do except for the 5-HTP. Uh, all the others you'll know in the first night or two. You see what they do, and then you adjust them with the doctor's guidance, of course, uh, for everything we talked about today with your health practitioner's guidance. Uh, and you mix and match them to go ahead and uh, get eight hours of solid sleep without waking up or hangover. I don't care if you wake up for like 30 seconds and you roll over and go back to sleep, but without that wide awake kind of wakings. Now, so you'll find with this combination, you're going to be able to get to eight to nine hours. I want to go quickly through a couple other things. Sleep apnea, present in about 3 to 17 percent of adults, missed by most physicians who don't even know to look for it. So if you snore and stop breathing, and if you have high blood pressure, if you walk asleep, fall asleep easily during the day, not tired during the day, but if you nod off behind the wheel or watching TV, if you have a large neck size over 16 and a half inches, but again, and anybody pretty much with high blood pressure and CFS and fibromyalgia who snores and is overweight, I'm going to look for sleep apnea. Um, on our questionnaire for our new patient visits, uh, we ask if you're more than 20 pounds overweight. Ask a bed partner if you have periods that you stop breathing and snore. Do you have high blood pressure? Uh, if so, I recommend people videotape themselves as a screening at night to see if they snore and stop breathing. Also pay attention in the videotape if it only happens on your back or it happens in any position. 
because if it only happens on your back, there's a one dollar treatment for that. So for sleep apnea, the best treatments lose weight, and there's uh, the Shine protocol we talk about helps people to lose the weight often. Uh, surgery or appliances, uh, I find that the dental appliances that move the jaw forward are probably better than sleep than CPAP because three quarters of people don't tolerate the CPAP. That's that mask that blows into their face. But if you only do this, or predominantly when you're lying on your back, take a shirt, cut out a shirt from a uh, pocket from an old shirt, put a tennis ball in it, sew it closed, and sew it to the middle of the small of the back in a tight uh, T-shirt or something similar. And that way, you wear that to bed. When you lie on your back, you're going to be lying on the tennis ball. You're not going to be comfortable that way. Even in your sleep, it will automatically cause you to roll over on your side. This way, you won't be back black and blue the next morning when your spouse keeps elbowing you in the middle of the night because you're snoring. So the tennis ball, nice, simple way to help that problem. The rest of the syndrome, if you find that your sheets and blankets and bed partner are kicked around in the middle of the night, um, you want to optimize having nice, calm legs and having your legs sleep while you are by optimizing iron levels. You want to get the ferritin level over 60. That the, the ferritin is the main blood test for iron. And the normal range is insanely insane. If it's, if it's over 12, the test will say you're normal. The research has shown that it has to be over 60. And otherwise, it will contribute to legs jumping, uh, fatigue, and other issues. Um, the other key things, the bedtime protein snack we talked about, because low blood sugar will trigger restless legs. Your thyroid being low will trigger restless legs, and many people find taking some of their thyroid dose at bedtime helps their sleep. But also then B12, folate, 5-HTP cob, and wild lettuce, these may also have some modest effect on helping uh, the legs to stay calm. Uh, night sweats. Uh, if you have night sweats disrupting sleep, the main causes are low estrogen in women and low testosterone in men, uh, infections, especially candida, uh, acid reflux or aspiration, in which case you want to raise the head of the bed, we'll talk about that a bit, uh, and in upcoming things as well, how to treat that, and low blood sugar at night will cause night sweats. Um, so the protein snack again, so that protein one ounce snack can really help sleep. You want to give that a try for a couple nights to see if it does in your case. Um, but again, I want to reiterate, if you fall asleep at the wheel or when you're watching TV, you fall asleep easily, uh, and I'm not talking about fatigue. Most people see CFS are exhausted all day, but can't sleep. Daytime falling asleep easily, sleep apnea, narcolepsy, sedation from medications, all of these can be addressed and can be very helpful. So again, the poor sleep in CFS and fibromyalgia is usually secondary to an energy crisis that causes a major control center in the brain to go into hibernation mode. Uh, it's basically like tripping a circuit breaker. And to restore normal hypothalamic function, you need to get your eight hours of deep sleep a night for at least six months. And you need to take the sleep support for as long as you need to take it. Think of it like high blood pressure medicine. You don't get the blood pressure down and then quickly come off the medication. You take it for as long as is needed. Over time, you can do other things to help bring it down very often. But you use it as long as it's needed. So to summarize, begin with sleep hygiene and making the time for eight hours of sleep a night. Begin with the revitalizing sleep formula, followed by the magnesium, lavender or calmade, 5-HTP and melatonin at bedtime for excellent sleep support. If your mind is wide awake at bedtime, add the sleep tonight mix. And for those with CFS and fibromyalgia, um, have your doctor add in the other medications we talked about. Most sleep medications, except for Ambien, force you into light sleep and make the problem worse. Things like Halcyon, Dalmain, those kind of things. I don't recommend them. Uh, these other things, most of which are not actually called sleep medications, but you're using that they help sleep as a side benefit of the medications, um, can be much better and much more helpful in CFS and fibro. Optimizing sleep will help you stay young, trim, and healthy. So if you have fatigue, there are five steps needed to optimize energy. And I'm going to invite you to write these down. The five key areas are what we call the SHINE protocol, S-H-I-N-E. 
S stands for sleep, which we talked about tonight. H is hormonal support, even if the blood tests are normal. I would be infections, N is nutritional support, and E is exercise as able. And I stress the as able, the CF, those with CFS and fibro. If you exercise too much, you're gonna crash and burn. But if you don't exercise at all, you will decondition. So there's a middle path in there. Uh, going for walks is a good way to begin. To make all of this simple, uh, we have made uh, what we call the free energy analysis program available at the website www.endfatigue.com. It has a mix of simple quizzes and even can review pertinent lab tests. The lab tests are not critical, but if you have them available, there's a place where you can enter the pertinent ones. It analyzes all of this to assess your case and determine what is needed to optimize your energy production. It will then tailor a detailed recommendation list for your list, for your case, so you can optimize energy. This makes it very easy. You don't have to be uh, 35 years of training as an expert. Um, I basically took my brain and computerized it as it comes to what I've learned from helping people, the CFS and Fibro, uh, to how to help everybody to get more energy. Now, one other key area that disrupts sleep is pain, and that needs to be addressed to get a good night's sleep. Until you also, until you treat the poor sleep, the pain won't go away. Pain is when our body's repair cycles occur, and you don't sleep, the, the muscles don't repair, and the pain persists. So pain both causes and is caused by poor sleep. So I want to start with my favorite herbal mix for pain. It's called Curamin, C-U-R-A-M-I-N. It's outstanding. It is a pain relief miracle. It is a mix of a very special, highly absorbed curcumin, uh, a boswellia that has the active components optimized and the uh, unhelpful parts deleted. It's a DLPA, which uh, basically raises your own body's endorphin levels. And natokinase, it helps to break up, if there's inflammation or other things, it helps to break it up so your body's repair mechanism can get in there. Uh, when I first saw this, I said, yeah, it's an interesting mix, but uh, I was not prepared for the effects that I saw. People are coming back who had pain for 20 years and saying, oh my God, my pain is gone. People that the morphine didn't help, the pain was going away. The Curamin is a pain relief miracle. And uh, I very, very happily recommend it. That's what I would reach for first for pain. Um, the, I'm not gonna go through all the, the things on the slide about the why it's so amazing, but it's all written down there. It just is. It's a pain relief miracle. It literally, it kicks pain's butt. <laughs> You're gonna love it. So now, like most natural remedies, um, you wanna give it six weeks to see the effect. The herbals go in and repair. So it's like building a house. It takes one day to, to knock down a house, but you know, six weeks to put it up once the foundation is built. Um, the shine lays the foundation for pain relief. The Curamin kind of rebuilds systems uh, to help. Now, a lot of people get benefit the first half hour or hour after, but um, for the more severe kind of situations, go ahead and take two capsules three times a day. That's twice the recommended dose on the box for six weeks. You can take it along with any pain medications or the other herbals. Give it six weeks to see the full effect. Once the pain level has gone down, uh, or at six weeks, you can then lower the dose. It takes much less uh, of most everything to keep you pain-free than to get rid of pain. Another excellent herbal mix that plays well with the, uh, with the curamin is called End Pain. It's a mix of willow bark, boswellia, and sherry. Same thing, one to two tablets three times a day. Give it six weeks, and you can take it along with the curamin, and then you can lower the dose to see what's needed to maintain the pain relief. Um, and the third wonderful, uh, my, my third favorite thing for pain that's natural, topical comfrey. Uh, you can rub it over the painful areas, works quite quickly. Uh, excellent, excellent for pain relief. That can be used with other pain, things like the menthol creams and uh, the aspirin creams and things like that. And the comfrey is outstanding. And uh, it's just, this trio is a very nice mix for pain relief. Um, 
So I want to wrap up with a couple things. Uh, for those who are interested in an appointment, I do phone consultations uh, or in-person consultations for people with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia worldwide. Um, so for those who are CFS and fibro who are interested, uh, our appointments take three to four hours. Uh, this is of my one-on-one -on -one time. I'm not talking about the time you spend with secretaries and stuff. Um, I do the appointments out of my home. Um, and this is my one-on-one -on -one time that I'm spending on your case. Uh, first hour is reviewing your old medical records, questionnaires, labs. The second hour to hour and a half will be us speaking together over the phone or in person. And then the third hour, I'm typing up a summary and a very detailed uh, treatment protocol for your case. Um, people find, well, what our study showed, 85% of people improve, and it's actually closer to 91% in the study, with an average 90% increase in quality of life. CFS and fibromyalgia are very, very treatable. Uh, for those that are interested, I invite you to contact Sarah, uh, my appointment secretary, at appointments at nft.com, or call 410-573-5289. Leave a voice message. Um, the staff is very busy in taking care of folks with this disease. is very time intensive. So you're going to get the voicemail. Leave a message. They will call and set up a time to talk to you. Uh, and I look forward to working with you to help you get better. Not everybody can afford an appointment, and the three to four hours takes a lot of time. So um, the energy analysis program that we talked about is a very good way to begin. And like I say, that's, we made that free. Uh, that's my gift to make sure that everybody can get effective care, not only people who have the money to afford it. Um, other resources, the, we have at entity.com, there's a free email newsletter. Um, we have the energy analysis program we mentioned. There's a free app called Cures A to Z. So C-U-R-E-S, capital A dash C. It's on the Android and on the uh, iPhone. It's kind of like having my brain in your pocket, but not as messy for all kinds of things for optimizing health. Uh, you'll find the information in there is invaluable. Uh, has many useful articles. And we're going to have a monthly webinar the first Monday of each month. So uh, when you sign up for the newsletter, you'll also get um, invites to the monthly webinar. And there's much, much more on the website. Um, in time, we're going to start having Q&A webinars. We're going to be developing what we call the Get Well Now Club, where we really tailor things to help guide each individual through their process of optimizing energy. Um, that's going to take some time to develop, uh, but uh, in the beginning, we're going to start by having a monthly question and answer webinars. So for those of you who have questions, uh, you know, I'll be answering questions, um, and they'll be available for people that are part of the Get Well Now Club or for those who use the auto ship program on our website. Some of my other books, and there's about 10 of them out there now, I include From Fatigue to Fantastic, which is the best-selling book of all time on chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Um, pain Free 123, for those of you with pain. Uh, as the main problem, Beat Sugar Addiction Now, um, how to get off of uh, sugar without killing the people around you. Um, for those of you, if you're wondering if you're a sugar addict, <laughs> you are. Um, for those who would like a natural owner's manual for your body, Real Cause, Real Cure. And my newest book, The Fatigue and Fibromyalgia Solution. Um, my other book from Fatigue Fantastic is like a medical textbook. It has hundreds of scientific references. It's a very in-depth book on the illnesses. This book is a nice, simple, easy read for people with brain fog. Uh, it's more Vogue, Cosmo kind of style of writing. And it's this nice, easy thing, but still gives you all the information you need to know how to get from where you are. To feeling great. Um, we talked about a number of supplements. Um, these, every, most of the ones we talked about today can be found at my website at www.endfatigue.com, where we carry a host of um, nutrients and supplements that really can help people to optimize their health. Um, our prices are very, very low. And if you use a monthly auto ship, or it'll just send you each month. You can adjust how often it gets sent as well. Uh, you get an additional 20% off our already ridiculously low prices <laughs> and uh, also free membership in the Get Well Now Club. So um, I invite you to join us. And uh, at the end of each webinar, we're not going to have it for this taping here, but uh, we do uh, take the Q&A. 
And I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. I invite you to have your friends come to um, send them the link for the webinar, which will be on our website at entity.com. And if you have friends who have trouble getting a good night's sleep, please pass the information along. We want our goal is to make effective, well, to make optimal health available for everybody. And you're sharing this information helps us in that goal, and we thank you. So uh, everybody, have a great day. Be well. Thank <laughs> you.